run by Steve, a manly man. Very man. He's got some security. Just a handful of guys. He's still a badass. Very bad. They're just in case. He's manly. Oh, he's handsome. He's sexy. He's Hasn't earned his money. Wait, who says that? What? Just because the guy's married to the president's daughter means it was a wasta or a nepotism or he had it easy? Nah, uh Come on, y'all. That doesn't make any sense. Are you saying Gibran Basim is unworthy? Is that what you're saying? Howdy folks and welcome to episode 22 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host Anthony coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut in Jayatewe. And by the way, I've decided to keep my studio in Jayatewe. I am personally moving to Junye, to Zoom Kail, to the 09, but I will keep a presence in Beirut. I'm going to keep my studio here. I'm expanding it to, uh, to accommodate the second podcast that I am still working on. I'm still not going to reveal much, although I really want to, but... We're staying in Jaitewa, folks. We're keeping that in the intro. Uh, how, how are you guys doing? I miss you guys. I skipped last week's episode. I'll talk a little bit about that. My parents have traveled. They have left Lebanon. They are now in the United States. My dad actually just called me from Target. He's at Target. He's buying some shit at Target. I'm happy for him. I miss them, but I'm happy. Uh, how are you guys? Please take a second to like this video. Leave a comment. Engage with this video. It always helps. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Folks, while I was away... We crossed 3,000 subscribers. I love you, 3,000. We did it. We did it, guys. 3,000. We're at like 3. Point, almost 3.2K. That's pretty fucking awesome. Now we're going steadfast to the 5K mark. We're going to skip over the 4K. I'm not going to celebrate 4,000 subscribers. That's lame. We're going to celebrate 5,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. And I'm kidding. 4,000 subscribers is not lame. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the support. I missed you. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Hope you guys liked the intro. Holy fuck, a song? I, as soon as I decided to, to do a song about Gibran Basid and then I tweeted it, I instantly regretted it. I hope you guys like it. I know the audio sounds shitty. This isn't a, like a mic that's done for singing. I, I don't know how to mix audio or anything like that. So hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it didn't make your ears bleed. Um, but yeah, uh, we got some interesting topics to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, the Gibran Basile ordering his guards to beat up a woman in Batroun. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about a crazy event that happened last week. Again, w- w- during the week that I skipped. Uh, Joseph Shada, infamous Lebanese TikToker, had a meet and greet 
at City Mall Dota, and he ended up getting into a scuffle and a physical altercation with a bunch of teenagers. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to break down the whole fight, the whole event. I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, some, some of my personal stuff with my family leaving. And I'm going to give you guys some television recommendations right at the end. Just a couple of recommendations really quick. One of them is Bo Burnham. As you may have guessed, without further ado, let's get the show on the road. Okay, so my parents are now in the U.S. So I, I skipped the episode last week because I wanted to spend some quality time with my parents, my mom and dad, who have both left to and moved to Virginia, Northern Virginia in the United States. Uh, my sister came over here last Saturday. So she spent a week here to help my parents pack. Um, all of that should get their shit sorted out so that they can travel. Uh, so I spent literally the last like eight days with my family every day, just helping them pack, saying goodbye, seeing a bunch of other family. Um, it was a very elongated, like I usually like quick goodbyes. I don't like to stretch stuff out. This was like eight days of goodbye of goodbyes. It was pretty depressing. I have to say, cause, um, like I've, I've left before. It's not the first time I say goodbye to my parents. Uh, my sister left to the U S when she was 18. I left to the U S when I was 17. So I already said goodbye to my parents a long time ago. We had the teary goodbyes. Everyone cried. Uh, I've been through that many times. I've come back to visit many times. I've had to say goodbye to my parents over and over and over again. It's a very hard thing to do. It fucking sucks. Uh, so um, I wasn't looking forward to doing it again. And this time was different because look, I moved back to Lebanon six years ago. Uh, one of the reasons I, I moved back here was to start a business. I wanted to sell comic books. I wanted to do my own thing. I honestly wasn't that happy in the, in the US. I wasn't all, all that happy there. Uh, and another part of me wanting to come back was to be closer to my family. Uh, my mom has a very rare form of muscular dystrophy. It's called mitochondrial myopathy. So she has a very rare physical illness, which makes it very hard for her to travel. So if I was in the States, it would have been very hard for my mom to come visit me. So I really wanted to be in Lebanon, be closer to my mom, be closer to my dad. So to now have to be here now without them, you know, they're one of the main reasons I came back. So to see my parents leave and for me to take them to the airport and have to, you know, say goodbye to them was not something I was planning on doing. Uh, I certainly didn't think that was going to be a possibility when I came back here. And it just goes to show you how fucking inept and shitty our government is. So me singing about Gibran Basid in the beginning, he's obviously to blame. Saad al-Hariri, Nabih Birri, Hassan Nasrallah, uh, Samir Jaja. Minbat fi, who, who did I forget? Uh, Senyura from way back when, Miati, all these guys, all these dudes who have fucked Lebanon up the ass. No offense, you're gonna be, oh, don't, don't use sex as a fuck off, all right? This country has been fucked to bits by these people. And now that my parents aren't here, I really got nothing to lose anymore. You know what I mean? It's just fucking me over here, man. So if I'm gonna stay in this country, I gotta make it count. If I'm gonna be here without my fucking family, Every second here needs to count. I need to do shit that I want to do. I'm going to spend more time on this podcast. I'm excited about the other podcast that I'm going to do. There's a documentary that I kind of want to film that I, I just a few days ago, I got the idea for it. I think it could be done for a low budget. I'm really interested in it, in it. So I honestly just want to spend my time doing things that I like. I have to try to find a way to make money. I have to justify being here because right now it feels pretty stupid being here, especially someone in my position who has an American passport, someone who has a way out. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here anymore. So hopefully you guys like these videos. Hopefully you guys like this content enough and you want me to continue making it because this YouTube channel is the only reason I'm still here. I'm not going to shit you guys. And by the way, I, I don't want to seem ungrateful. I am extremely happy that my parents got the fuck out of here. I am extremely happy that they are out of the grasp of all of our shitty politicians. Uh, they, they have an opportunity to live in dignity, to be comfortable. You know, in the US, a lot of people here in Lebanon wish they had that opportunity, but it also sucks for my parents because they're in their 60s. They're not supposed to say goodbye to their family and not know if they're ever going to see them again, especially for someone like my mom. It's very hard for her to travel and go back and forth. So she may have said her final goodbyes to some of her family members here. That's fucked up. And I blame the Lebanese government. Fuck you guys from the bottom of my heart. Fuck you guys, you inept pieces of shit. Come after me if you want to come after me, you motherfuckers. Come after me. You know what? I'm a fucking US citizen. I got nothing to fucking lose. You want to come after me? Come after me. All my viewers, all my do not warriors, anything fucking happens to me, 
Go for the U.S. Embassy. Let them know I'm a U.S. citizen living here in Lebanon. If something happens to me because of my government, because I spoke out against them, please help me out. If I'm kidnapped, if anything happens to me, I'm only half kidding, guys. I'm being I'm being serious, okay? I'm going to be a little bit more vocal on this podcast. Fuck making fun of people like Daddy, Foodie, and Tufi Luke. I'm going to go for these fucking politicians who have ripped my family, who have ripped my family apart, who have stolen my family's savings, who have put all this pressure on my sister now to make my family survive by being the only person who's earning a solid living. Fuck you guys, you dumb, stupid, criminal, hillbilly motherfuckers. I'm not naming names, so, you know, can't arrest me. Fuck y'all motherfuckers, I'm serious. My fucking parents are gone in their fucking 60s. This is slightly unrelated, but I'm going to read this tweet. Uh, there's a tweet I want to read you guys that is going to lead me to another thread by Lena Munzer, who's an amazing like uh, writer, and she has a lot of amazing tweets. There's this dude, this random white dude who's on Twitter a couple days ago. He wrote this. As a non-Lebanese living in Lebanon, I cannot fathom how, why so many citizens can be constantly humiliated. No gas, electricity, water, food, air pollution, solid waste, and live in a state of uncertainty. This is not resilience. This is apathy. A bunch of people, you know, get mad at his tweet uh, for, you know, uh, I get I get it. It's a pretty stupid and insensitive tweet. Someone responds. It's not apathy, sir. We live in a country ruled by a cartel of thugs and warlords backed by an armed extremist militia that is stronger than a state and that has international ramifications. So please enlighten us on how we can change things and make our lives bearable. Marco responds by saying, I have no idea. I don't have solutions in mind. Just venting out my frustration about the struggles of living in this place. Hanan responds by saying, you can just leave. And Marco says, you can too. Ooh, Marco, 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 Marco. Most people can't fucking leave, my dude. Don't be an idiot. Don't be bringing your white stupidity shit over here. We don't need your white fucking savior shit. Save your opinions, okay, please. We don't need to hear it. But Lina Munzer then hits us with this brilliant thread on why it's so hard to leave Lebanon, etc. I'm going to read it. It's a little bit long, but bear with me because it's worth it. A thread on leaving. Those who retort just leave about Lebanon perhaps don't know or remember that leaving home is a devil's bargain. You must exchange part of your heart for your life. Leaving home because you were forced to leave, because you couldn't make a life in the place in which you most desire to make a life, is the most bitter sort of heartbreak there is. Living abroad has always felt like exchanging one form of misery for the other. In the new place, you have dignity, if you're lucky, but are doomed to constant burning longing. The sense that life and color are elsewhere. At home, you have humiliation, instability, unsafety, but you have the warmth of family. You have what can only be defined as home. Foreigners who can leave Lebanon at any time are lucky, not just because of the foreign passport that allows them to do so, it's because they don't need to make the devil's bargain to leave. They can leave without ripping their hearts out of their chest. I translate testimonies by mostly Syrians from an archive on Arab migrations. 20 new testimonies a month. Many people fled jail and torture with just the clothes on their backs. Many made harrowing journeys that they were lucky to survive. Almost all express immense gratitude for the new lives they now live, even though many are fraught with hardship. But not a single one doesn't miss Syria with every sinew in their body. Not a single one isn't devastated about leaving, wishing always they could just live a safe, dignified, and stable life at home. I often cry through the entire translation, feeling that devil now behind my own shoulder, offering me that same terrible bargain. Leaving home against your will because you were forced out by monsters is the bitterest kind of defeat there is. The privilege in being able to say just leave doesn't only lie in the assumption that leaving is materially easy but in not having to consider the terrible and enduring pain of the choice to leave or the pain of even having to make that choice in the first place. Uh, This sits close to home, man, because I'm constantly told, just leave, just leave. My dad, my family is putting immense pressure on me to to leave Lebanon. And now, now that my parents aren't here, me leaving is a lot easier because if I had to leave with my parents here, that would have been way more difficult. Now that my parents are there, I honestly want to leave more. I'm more likely to leave. But I still don't necessarily want to leave. I don't want to live in the States. I don't want to work in the States. I don't see myself there. I lived there for almost 10 years and I came back. So to feel like I have to leave and to be, and yeah, okay, I have the US passport and I'm lucky and I feel lucky and I know that I'm lucky. But like, it's, it's really not, you just can't tell someone, well, just leave. Dude, my whole fucking life is here. I'm 30. My career is here. My reputation is here. If I leave, I have to start from fucking scratch. 
Who the fuck wants to do that? And I know I'm going to eventually have to do that. Me being here is just me fucking trying to hold on to whatever shred of hope there is. And it's not even hope in the country. It's just hope that I can make something for myself here. But regardless, this is just a very long way of saying I miss my parents. Fuck the Lebanese government for making my parents leave. Fuck the Lebanese government for making all of your parents leave and making you guys want to leave and ruining our lives and making us have to make this decision. Lebanon is not Lebanon without my parents. Home is not home without my parents. I'm now staying in my parents' apartment in Junia. It is very fucking depressing being in there, feeling their presence, but them not being here. Um, it's tough, man. It's tough. They, they took away the one thing that made this place home. And, um, yeah. So Jibran Basile, a Lebanese politician, uh, head of the free patriotic movement and son-in-law of our Lebanese president are totally not senile, totally qualified, totally capable, totally not old as fuck. Lebanese president, General Michel Oun, president. Uh, so Gibran Basile was walking around in Batroun a few days ago. Uh, a brave Lebanese woman by the name of Yasmin told him, Tfu alik. Uh, little man Gibran Basile couldn't handle that and sent his bodyguards to beat the fuck out of her. Let us listen to her words describing the brave Gibran Basile. Here's Yasmin in her own words. Uh, let, me, let me get her full name. So her full name is Yasmin Masri. That is her name. So here she mentioned that she filmed the guy who beat her. Here's that video. That's her following him. Again, she's so fucking brave. Yasmin, you're such a badass. <laughs> Let's look at this weasel's face. Ooh, look at that handsome, strong man beating a woman. Only a real man can hit a woman. You're right. Whoever the fuck, whatever the fuck your name is, you tough little squirrel, look at you. Look at that guy behind you running to back you up. Oh, yeah, you got to beat that woman. Ooh, ooh, you fuckers. You fuckers. Oh, my God. And this is what Gibran Basil's... Maktab had to say about what happened. Maktab Basil yuhalik ala hadithat al-Batroun. Intaha zaman al-Shatima min dun jawab. That means we're basically not allowed to insult our politicians anymore or else we're going to get beat. We can't say shit to them without them answering. And when they say they're going to answer back, it means by force. Oh, Jibran Basil, you handsome, tall, strong man. So this is Lebanon. We live in a country where our shitty, corrupt, criminal thieving politicians think they can walk around in the streets and if we tell them something as simple as tfu alik, they lose their shit their tiny little egos get all bruised and they send their little bodyguards to beat the fuck out of women in the streets half of beirut was destroyed in a blast there is no electricity, there is no water, there is no fuel, there is nothing, there is no money, the economy's collapsed, our currency is completely dead. Yet Gibran Basile still thinks that he is beyond reproach and beyond criticism. Bro, you fucking suck at your job, allegedly. So Yasmin Masri, you're a fucking badass. I admire you, I salute you. I hope I have a fraction of the courage you have if I'm faced in a, uh, with a similar situation. Um, I don't think I would be as courageous as you. You're such a badass. And uh, Gibran Basil, you're so handsome. Folks, we're going to talk a little bit about Joseph Shada once again. Friend of the show and fan of the show, might I say, Joseph Shada. He watches the show on the regular, leaves comments and stuff now, uh, sends me DMs. We'll, we might talk about that some other time. But I wanted to talk about something that happened to Joseph Shada last week. Uh, he was doing a meet and greet. Actually, a friend of mine, Nul, who helped me with the TikTok compilation a few episodes ago, sent, sends me a WhatsApp like, oh my God, Joseph Shada is doing a meet and greet in City Mall. I was like, I'd love to go. And I would have fucking gone, but I had to spend some time with my family, you know, priorities. Uh, and I was, I was regretful that I couldn't go to that meet and greet just to surprise Joseph Shada. But controversy ensued. A bunch of teenagers, a bunch of kids went to City Mall to start a fight with Joseph Shada. And uh, he's on camera getting in a fight with a bunch of like 15 and 16 year olds, 
which is unfortunate for him. It's not a good look, you know what I mean? Being an adult, a 24-year-old teacher. But I don't think Joseph Shada did, did anything wrong. In fact, I think those little abusive teens were the problem. Uh, let's go through the saga. Let me explain to you guys what happened by watching the video. So let's first start by showing you a quick look at the meet and greet, what it looked like. Okay, so th that's pretty weird and awkward looking. Let's uh But then things took a turn for the worst uh when this kid Adrian shows up. Here's what happens. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> So it's freezing because it was live streamed. Okay. Rudy Sade or something. Uh, this is a little bit unorganized. So I'm gonna just try to find how this stuff was, uh, you know, was filmed. So here, here's another video. these are there's a lot of shitty people there let's just say that there was another wait let me continue that one was when adrian picks up the here <laughs> Uh, let's watch a little bit more of the fight. Here's uh, some extra footage. But this is so uncomfortable, like those kids are assholes, he's just sitting there with them uncomfortably, like awkwardly, they're making fun of him, he's telling them scot. Like, dude, why are you putting yourself in this position? Why are you doing a fucking meet and greet in City Mall, bro? I know you want to meet your fans, but it's like... <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh, and here's friend of the show, Basit Nation. I salute you, sir. Look 
يا عمي بلا مش جاي يا عم مشاكل بس هاي قلة اخلاق يعني يا زلمة ما فينا نكون بيدوفيل لا اذا ما رحت خلص انا ماشي خلص روق حرام جايز ليك عملت اوكي مبسوط اجى 20 شخص واحد قال له Okay, so they use the p-word. They accuse him of the p-word, and he decides finally to fucking leave. Why were you still there, bro? And the girl who's filming, he's gonna talk about her later. Apparently, she's his friend, bro. She's not your friend. Okay, she did not make you look good at all. Don't bring this girl to ever film with you again. She fucking stabbed you in the back, my dude. She made you look really fucking bad. So at the meet and greet again, that kid Adrian, who, by the way, this is this is his account, Adrian Fadis. 97.3k followers and adrian tried to explain himself why he started the fight wh why the fight even happened etc here's here's his explanation what i will say is listen kid i'm sorry your dad passed away sucks you're a young kid uh, i'm sure your dad was an awesome dude uh this isn't gonna make your dad proud bro don't do that and don't use that as an excuse to go start fights in a mall okay watching the videos you come off as kind of a little brat and kind of obnoxious let's see joseph shada responding to the fight and to the controversy <laughs> اللي هي انه لما كنت بمكان عام اجى تيك توكر وتنمر علي وجرب يعتدي بالضرب اكيد هيدا الشيء مش مقبول وهو كان مفكر انه بس يعمل هالشغله الناس رح تقول له برافو مفكر حاله عمل انجاز وهو بالحقيقه فرجه اللي تمربي واللي تاخلاقه كلنا بنعرف نضرب الرجوليه مش انك تجي تعتدي على الناس خاصه اذا جايب معك كذا شخص تستقوا على شخص اكبر منكم بالعمر ومحترم بدي اقول لمتابعيني انه ان شاء الله تكونوا بقى عرفتوا حقيقته لما كنت عم بقول لكم ما كنتوا عم تقتنعوا بس بعتذر منكم الحق عليكم انتم لانكم عملتوا له متابعه واعطيتوه قيمه لدرجه صار مفكر حاله في يعتدي على الناس على كل حال بالنسبه لي الموضوع انتهى هو هلا اذا بده يطلع من البيت الناس رح يقولوا له يا عيب الشوم عليك بس انا رح ضل روح واجي بكل فخر وبكل اعتزاز لانه العالم بيحبوني وبيحترموني وخاصه من بعد هيك موقف كنت حاسس انه رح انحط فيه ضلوا انشروا فيديوهات حكوا عن الموضوع انشروا التوعيه لحتى هيدا الشيء ما يتكرر لا معي ولا مع حدا ثاني uh so then i think adrian that's when adrian dropped his video about like the dad then joseph shada there's a follow up واحد الشخص اللي ضربني من يومين بعد ما خلصت وصلت مواصيله يبلش يطلع كذبات ويستخدم بيو لحتى يستعطف العالم لو كيف الك عين كيف الك هالوقاحة منين جايب هالوقاحة بدي افهم بس انا ايه ما تسبب لبيك يا حبيبي انا الك مش سبب لك رغم كل شي عملته فيي على تيك توك وجيت بالحياة طلعت بعيوني وتنمرت علي وهنتني وضربتني كذا مرة لا طويلة عرقتك ما رح تقطع خير ان شاء الله مفكر الناس رح يقولوا لك برافو يزقفوا لك ماني خايف منك عمول اللي بيطلع بايدك بقى انا بس عم بقول كرمال الناس مشان ما يضيعوا لانك عمل لي بلوك لحتى ما اقدر رد على الكومنتس حاجه تحدد انضب اعترف بغلطك فهم غلطك بقى انت كثير زبطه معي ومع غير عالم برو ديد يو جايز سي هيز فاكينج ايز دو تشيك ذا شيت اوت فاك برو ليتس ليتس لوك ات لوك ات لوك ات هيز ايز اجين برو ذات از فاكينج تيريفاينج يو انضب اعترف بغلطك فهم غلطك بقى انت كثير زبطه معي ومع غير عالم اوكي دود يو gotta chillax Josep these are fucking kids dude they're like 12 years old they're idiots don't you don't have to interact with them like ما تفوت حالك بهالديبيجه برو why are you even tiktoking with a bunch of 10 year olds man anyways let's look i i really gotta say i think Josep Shada handled the situation really poorly a the person he brought with him to film was not helping the situation she did not deescalate she made it worse she filmed all of it all these awkward moments and they were posted online those kids were fucking annoying he should have either walked away or fucking smacked the shit out of them there you know teach him a little fucking lesson those little fucking brats again the kid is using his dad as an excuse that's not an excuse to be a dick dude okay 
Uh, so don't do that. That may have worked with Joseph Shad. If you try that with another adult, they're probably gonna whoop your fucking ass. So don't try that. Yeah, this is fucking weird, man. Joseph Shad, don't get into fights with kids at City Mall. I'm not gonna lie, part of me wishes I was there to see the whole thing and to see the fight. But, uh, you know, alas. Oh, actually, there's another. There's, I forgot. There's another fight with another person. I don't know, man. He got into so many fights that day. Stop doing meet and greets, dude. Here, check this out. <laughs> Dude, this is so bad, man. <sighs> Fucking Joseph Shad, dude, this is so bad, man. But surrounded by kids, they're all beating your ass, and you're like awkwardly, they're bullying you. You're getting bullied by a bunch of kids, dude. What the fuck, man? You need security. You need bodyguards, not Jibran Basil. And this is this was just funny, just because Joseph said that, like, has a whole TikTok trying to prove that he's not short, and here he is, in this picture, like, standing on his tiptoes. Dude, you're being filmed, man. Oh my god. Okay. Anyways, this is not to make fun of Joseph Shada. I'm taking Joseph Shada aside. All right, he got abused, he got harassed, and he got bullied. Joseph Shada, I support you. Adrian Fattis and his other stupid friends. You guys are little dicks. Okay. There we go. Okay, I think I'm going to lump in uh, my TV recommendations with the outro since I only have two quick recommendations for you guys. Loki, I'm watching Loki on Disney+. Plus. Um, if you have OSN, if you're subscribed to the OSN streaming service, you get all of the Disney Plus shows and HBO stuff. So it's a lot of fun. I'm a big MCU fan. I already watched all of WandaVision. I loved it. I watched Falcon and Winter Soldier. Really enjoyed that. I'm not going to be able to do weekly breakdowns of Loki like I did with Falcon when I was with Danny, just because I don't have time to shoot an extra video and edit it every week right now that I'm working on the second podcast. But I'm going to try to do a, a season review once the whole thing is done. But I'm watching Loki. Loved the first episode. So much fun. Excited for the second episode. So I'm watching that. And I also watched Bo Burnham's Inside. Bo Burnham is an amazing stand-up comedian. He's hilarious. He's like my age. He's 30. I've been following this dude's career since he was 18. When I was 18 in college, I used to watch his videos online he had he had really like funny just you know songs that he would play so the dude's a fucking genius his stand-up special is a masterpiece i relate a lot to that guy he he talks a lot about mental health and depression stuff that i struggle with constantly i look up to him to his musical abilities to his just creativity he obviously inspired my opening jibran basil song i didn't write the music i didn't compose it i can barely compose any music but i love it i've seen it twice already i've downloaded the album on my spotify i've been listening to it on repeat it's fucking hilarious standout songs include jeffrey bezos one bezos two all eyes on me welcome to the internet it's an incredible album the dude is hilarious he's so creative i love bo burnham uh check it out on netflix you will not regret it he filmed the whole thing over one year during covid in one room it is you've never seen anything like it you're never going to see anything else like it um you're gonna love it and on that note thank you guys for watching episode 22 of do not worry it's been a pleasure i'm happy to be back please take a second to like this video leave a comment let me know what you guys think about the different topics your comments and your engagement does a lot to help this channel and thank you so much again for helping me cross the 3,000 subscriber mark i love you guys three thousand subscribe to the channel if you haven't become a do not worry or help me reach the five thousand subscriber mark and as usual folks do not worry do not worry